السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم The month of Ramadan is arriving soon, inshallah, and it carries with it excitement and enthusiasm. I remember when I was a child in the city of Karbala, before the month of Ramadan, they broadcast from the Ma'dana of Imam Hussein and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam, the welcoming word regarding the month of Ramadan. Marhaba ya shahr al-siyam. Marhaba ya shahr Allah. People were excited. People were eagerly waiting for the arrival of this month because this month is exceptional, is special. It carries with it so many meanings, so much blessings. The Prophet during this day, the last Friday of Sha'ban said, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إنه قد أقبل إليكم شهر الله بالبركة والرحمة والمغفرة. Three gifts, exceptional gifts. The first one is baraka, blessings. It has blessings, special blessings that are not found outside Ramadan, before Ramadan or after Ramadan, only during these 29-30 days. بالبركتي والرحمة mercy from God extra mercy God's mercy is available throughout the year but it intensifies during the month of Ramadan and above all والمغفرة a season of forgiveness God opens his doors wide open from the night the first night of Ramadan till the night of Eid for those who call upon him, for those who seek him, who look for him, for those who want to speak to him, for those who have needs, for those who have sins. It is the month of <clears throat> a season of sale. God offers his forgiveness unconditional to the people during the month of Ramadan. So it's a special season. We should not waste this month. We should intensify our Quranic recitation during this month, my friends. Man tala fihi ayatan, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says. Man tala fihi ayah, kana kaman khatam al-Quran kullahu fi ghayrihi min al-shuhur. One verse, one verse equals to the entire book, to reading the entire Quran outside Ramadan. One verse. In Ramadan, the reward that you get. Why it is important? Because God wants us to reflect on his book. Not just to memorize, not just to listen to or just read. He wants us to reflect. Reflect. Tadabbur. tadabbarun al-Quran. It is only through reflection that we get inspired. We get inspiration through reflection, not just the recitation. Not just the recitation. But when we reflect on the meaning of these verses, 
we get inspired. And inspiration is the first step for change, for transformation. Spiritual transformation, moral transformation. Outside the month of Ramadan, we don't get a chance to read this book. I am telling you. I am telling you. Very few people, very few people who read this book outside Ramadan. The vast majority, they don't. So Ramadan is an opportunity, the season for us to take care of this book, to carry this book, to reflect upon this book. At least one, one cycle of the Holy Quran, of the entire book. If we read one section, juzu, per day, it takes between 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your recitation. And sometimes you have to look up some of the meanings. When you read, you have to look up the meaning. So you have to stop and open the dictionary and look at the meaning or the tafsir. Search for the tafsir and look at the meaning. And now tafsirs nowadays are available. Read the tafsir of the ayah. What does this verse mean? What does this term mean? So reflect on the Quranic recitation during this month. It's an opportunity for us. Try to go to the masjid. Whether there is iftar or there is no iftar. The masjid is the house of God. And the Prophet says, Shahrun du'itum fihi ila diyafatillah. It's a month that you have been invited to the hospitality of God. Waju'iltum fihi min ahli karamatillah. And you have been made during the month of Ramadan the guest of honors of God. Guest of honors. So go to his house. I know our homes are very comfortable. Much more fancier than the mosque. But the mosque has a different meaning. When you come to the mosque, when you perform your prayers in the mosque, when you listen to the Quran and the dua and the Islamic lecture in the mosque, when, this, when you socialize within the boundaries of the mosque, it's different. It's different taste, different meaning. Try to go to them. Don't leave the mosques empty. Shaitan comes to me and he says, your stomach is full. You just had iftar. Stay at home, you know, Netflixing, ergeeling. Ergeeling means ergeel. <laughs> you know, chatting. This is what shaitan tells us. Believe me, as soon as you eat, you need to relax. You become temple, lazy. You cannot stand. But tell him, no, this is a special month. I have appointment. I need to go. I need to go. Ma'assalama, bye. I have time for Netflixing outside Ramadan. I have time for friends outside Ramadan. I have time for gossip and chatting outside Ramadan. This month is special for me. I am heading to the mosque. Go to the mosque. It takes energy. It takes time. It takes gas, money, effort, intention. But it is rewarding. It is rewarding. You will feel the rewards, the spiritual reward. You will feel it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, a very righteous and loyal companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, first class companion. He said to him, Ya Jabir, man, the month of Ramadan is coming. Man sama naharahu, whoever is able to observe the fast during the day, وَقَامَ وِرْدًا مِنْ لَيْلِهِ And he stands a section, a part of the night, not the whole night. A part of the night could be 10 minutes, could be 15 minutes, could be 20 minutes. It could be more, it could be less. وِرْدًا مِنْ لَيْلِهِ قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ Every night in Ramadan, whether 5 minutes or 20 minutes or 1 hour, at least stand, stand. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ Tahajjud is important during the month of Ramadan. Tahajjud builds our character, makes us stronger, makes us more enduring when we are faced with, with disasters in our life, we are more enduring. We are more persevering. This is the result of tahajjud. Tahajjud is connection. The meaning of tahajjud, you are connecting, connecting with a superpower, with Allah. 
And therefore Allah will take the fear, the anxiety out of your heart. Man saama naharahu wa qama wirdan, part of the night, section of the night. And then what is more important are these three. These three. Wasana batnahu wa farjahu. And he controls. It's about controlling, self-control. Controls his stomach and his private part from committing haram. And also another third important thing, the third one, wahafidha lisana. Restrained his mouth, his tongue from gossiping, from backbiting, from accusing, from slandering, from bad-mouthing. وَحَفِظَ لِسَانَهِ كان that person كان لخرج من ذنوبه كما يخرج الشهر That person is going to exit, exit out of his sins as the month exits. The month ends. The month will conclude and end during the night of Eid, Eid al-Fitr. This person who observes the fast and some of the prayers during the night, and he guards his stomach, his private part, his tongue from committing sins and gossiping, he will exit from his sins. This is the gift. Purification. Where do you find this gift? Who can offer you this gift? You are a new person on the day of Eid. Jabir was very impressed. He said, Ya Rasulullah, ma ahsanahu min hadith. What a wonderful hadith, beautiful hadith. What did the Prophet answer him? The Prophet said to him, Wa ma as'abaha min shurut. Yes, the hadith is beautiful, but the conditions are not easy. What difficult conditions too. Wa ma as'abaha min shurut. We can guard the tongue for one hour, for one day, but the following day, everything collapses. We forget that we are in the month of Ramadan. It's not easy. Self-purification is the hardest journey, the hardest thing to achieve. But Allah will make it easy if, if the intention is good, if we ask him now, two days, three days before Ramadan, God, make this Ramadan special for me. Not just like any Ramadan or the past Ramadan. I need, maybe this Ramadan is my last Ramadan. Every day we have a journey to the cemetery, burying someone. Sometimes in his 80s, sometimes 50s, we lost a young man at the age of 28 recently. So we don't know whether we are existing for the next Ramadan or, at le or even for the end of this Ramadan. We, de we don't know. We have to seize the opportunity. The month of Ramadan is arriving. Seize the opportunity. Make a difference in your life. When you pray, your prayers has to be special. Different from the prayers outside Ramadan. Different. More khushu, more humility, more focusing. And there are many things we can offer during the month of Ramadan. Inshallah, the month is going to be either Monday or Tuesday. We use calculations but we do not depend on them solely according to the prophet sum lirru'yati waftur lirru'ya the moon has to be observed at least by two at least by two witnesses two just witnesses so if the moon is seen on sunday night which is highly unlikely with naked eyes it could be seen with the binoculars and some of the scholars, they accept the binoculars. Many scholars accept Ayatollah Sistani. He doesn't accept. He depends on naked eyes. But other scholars, many other scholars, they accept seeing the moon with binoculars, but not with telescope. There is a difference between telescope and binoculars. Binoculars, al al musallaha. It's okay, but not telescope. If we... If we depend on telescope, tomorrow is, tomorrow is Ramadan. <laughs> tomorrow we have to be in the month. So no telescope, binoculars. So if it is seen on Sunday night, for those 
by binoculars for those who do taqlid of other scholars, they can begin on Monday. For those who follow Ayatollah Sistani, they have to wait until Tuesday. Unfortunately, we have this problem. And I am not responsible for it. I'm just giving you the opinion of the scholars. But inshallah, the day of Eid will be unified. The end of Ramadan, inshallah, will have one. All the Muslims worldwide, all the Muslims, inshallah, will have one's day, the, last, uh, the first day of Shawwal at the end of Ramadan, inshallah. So we will inform you. If you'd like to get quick response, give your number to Mushtaba, Hajj Mushtaba, Hajj Samir, and others, so they add you to our WhatsApp group. It's much faster, swifter. You can get the news on the Hilal, on the new moon, inshallah. Give your number to those two brothers so they can add you to the list. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asr inna al-insan ila fi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والإمام الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم One of the meanings of the month of Ramadan adding to what I mentioned earlier in the first sermon, is that it's a month of charity. It's a month of sharing. It's a month of giving. It's a month of contribution. It's a month of zakat. It's a month of sadaqah. It's a month where you share your money, your clothing, your medicine, your space, your food with others who are in need. And God says, لَن تَنَالُوا bir." By no means you may attain purification. Bir is a purification. Len, impossible. By no means you can attain it. Hatta until tunfiku, you give, you spend from what you love. This is important. Not the extra furniture. You don't know what to do with it. Before you dump it in the trash, you give it to the, you know. No, not that. Mimma tuhibbun. The clothing that you love, the food that you love, the money that you do love, you give from that. Mimma tuhibbun. This is the path to purification. This is the path. And the month of Ramadan is an opportunity to give, to share. And of course, we have many causes to give for, to give to. One of them are our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza. It's heart-wrenching. I cannot even watch these scenes of kids, little kids, three years old, four years old, carrying, 
you know, the plate, empty plate, standing in lines. At the end, they don't get anything. They come back home empty-handed. Or they receive bombs rather than food. This is very heart-wrenching. I don't know what to say. I really, I'm, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say anymore. So we have to give during this month, whether you give one dollar or one hundred thousand dollars, when you give it with good intention, give it to the, these rightful and deserving causes. Palestine is one example of them. And there are many other countries. In Lebanon, we have, we have, we have, they have the same situation. In Afghanistan, in, in many other countries. Many other countries. In America, in our backyard, there are families who are struggling. Struggling with food. With food. We have to give. During this month, we have to stand with them. We have to show God that we are human. We carry human heart. And one of the causes that is worthy of donation and zakat and khums and charity is the Islamic school that we are going to begin, inshallah, of fall of this year, inshallah. Ark Academy. Ark, the name Ark is after Safinatun Najat, the Ark of Salvation, which represents Muhammadun wa Ali Muhammad, alayhi The Prophet says, we are the Ark of Salvation. Whoever embarks upon this Ark is going to be saved. Whoever refuses and declines, غَرِقَ halak is going to perish and drown. So we named it after, after the Prophet and his family. Because we believe in the Prophet and we believe in his family and we aspire to follow them. And also it has biblical meanings too. Biblical meanings, not just Islamic meaning, the Ark. So this building which we purchased with the help of Allah and you the benevolent community, you the kind community, alhamdulillah. The building cost almost 4.4, to be exact, $4,310,000 we paid the day of escrow, but later on we had to pay the property tax and other costs. So it, it came to 4.4. Now this building has to be remodeled and furnished, which is estimated at 1.2. And everything has been itemized. Everything in the furniture has been itemized with the price. And we will send you that. So you will be aware of that. So we need 1.2. With Allah's help and with the kindness and generosity of some people outside this community, we secured $600,000 out of this 1.2 from two mu'mineen outside this community. Not in Orange County, outside. They sent $600,000, half of this amount. So we are left with another 600, which I am petitioning to Allah and to you to give this amount during the month of Ramadan, we are going to have a fundraising on March 16th, small fundraising in Irvine. If you want to contribute, whatever you are able to afford, whatever you are able to afford. But let me just remind you, remind you of one verse in the Quran. God says in the Quran, "Ma indakum yanfadu wa ma inda Allahi baq." Whatever a property and money and land and belongings and estates you have is going to expire, is going to come to an end. It is going to perish. Yanfad perishes. But whatever with Allah does not perish, endures and subsists. Put your money with God. Give your money to God. If you want your money not to perish, not to come to an end, not to be lost, leave it with God. He's a good caretaker. God is a good investor. Trust God. Trust Him. Trust His investment. A lesson that I learn when I go to a cemetery. A lesson I learn that I am not attached to this dunya. I am willing to exit this life any minute. They stamp the exit. 
stamp in my passport and I leave. I'm not attached to this dunya. And if I have kids and family, I entrust them with God. He's a good caretaker. I'm ready to leave. Because we are not living here. Even if I am going to live another 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, at the end we have to leave. We are not staying. We are not staying. You know, yesterday we buried a man who used to sit in this corner for so many years. Yesterday I put, you know, and I, was, I saw him. The last look at this man was me. Before they left the grave, I looked at his face. You were there in the cemetery. Many of you were there. A mu'min. Wali, he's really Wali min awliya illah, good friend of Allah. He left at the age of 83. And every day people are leaving. This is a reminder, this is a wake up call for us that you have to work for that chapter, the next chapter. The next life is real, is not a fantasy, is not a fairy tale, it's not a fiction, it's a real life. Prepare for it through your zakat through your donation. Prepare for it. And this cause, Ark Academy, is a worthy cause. Because my friends, we cannot deny the importance of Islamic education. We cannot deny the importance of Islamic, full-time Islamic school nowadays. And we have seen those who graduated from Islamic schools, they are good testimonies. When you look at them, to this fact, when you look at their character, their manner, their akhlaq, their their, their commitment to God, to their faith, they are good testimony. And you want your kids and your grandchildren to grow in a safe environment in this country. You don't want to lose them. It's a responsibility. Islamic school is the responsibility of all the community members. So this is a worthy cause. If you want to donate for ARC Academy, see Dr. Taqi. And by the way, let me add this sentence too. I know many of them, they don't. But this is my duty. There is a team of at least 10 people who are working on the board of directors. All of them are better than me, more truthful and more honest and more dedicated. I am the least among them. I am the least. Among those are Dr. Mehdi Taqi, a man of God. I love this man, not because he's my relative. For the sake of God. So dedicated. So dedicated this man. Wallah al azim So dedicated. Ahmed Khalifa is here. The next. And there are many others in this board of directors of ARC Academy. They are a professional. They are a professional. They are educated. They are committed. And inshallah, the school is going to be a big success. A big success. So if you want to donate for this cause, you can see them after the program because we're going to have our fundraising on March 16th, inshallah. Mu'mineen, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, this masjid is open every night beginning March 12th, Tuesday, inshallah. So the three nights, th Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, plus the nights of Qadr, the three nights of Qadr, we're going to have iftar. So we begin with Salat al-Maghrib followed by iftar and the dua and the a'mal. The nights that we don't have iftar, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the masjid is open. We have Quranic circle. We have dua al iftitah at 8.30. Remember, 8.30 p.m., followed by the uh, lecture, inshallah. So we want you to come to this masjid, each and every one of you. Bring your families. Bring your friends. Even if you have non-Muslim friends, Bring them to the masjid. Bring them to the masjid. Last night, a young man was sitting here while, while I was speaking. I did not know him. I don't know many people. I don't know their names. I see them by face. I recognize them by face, but I don't know them by name. When we left, we were standing in the lobby. He said, Sayyid, I'm from Turkey. You know, they changed the name Turkey into Turkey. This is the real name. He said, I'm from Turkey. And I recently embraced the school of Ahlul Bayt, Young man, he goes to UC Riverside. He said, because my friends, they brought me to the masjid for several weeks, for several Thursdays. This is a gift. So try to bring 
your neighbors, your co-workers, invite them to come and experience the atmosphere of the month of mercy, the month of Ramadan in this masjid. Tonight we're going to have, inshallah, Fatiha ceremony from 7 to 9 for the, the soul of Sayyid Shubbar Rida Kadhimi, who, who died and we buried him yesterday. And also after the Salat, immediately, they're going to be the burial of Hajj Khanum Sakineya Nasr, the mother of the Nasr family, a very noble woman who used to come for many, many years to this masjid. And she went to her Lord back to Allah, and we're going to follow. And also, I'd like to mention that tomorrow, the youth are having a Fatiha ceremony, memorial for the soul of the young man, 20 years, 28 years old, Sayyid Irfan Husseini, tomorrow, Saturday here. Let's pray for all of them. Allahumma khfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi'i allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'wat innaka ghafiru al-khati'at innaka mahi al-sayyati wa ja'iluha hasanat innaka ala kulli shayin qadir and we do not forget and we should never forget the martyrs, the shuhada of Gaza, West Bank, Lebanon, Palestine and we recite Surah Al-Fatiha for the souls of all the Mu'mineen. Al-Fatiha 